In every sprint, the first task your team must complete is deciding on what to work on and to create the plan to reach that goal. In this video, we're going to provide you with a process to follow to build and manage your sprint plan. So, let's get started. Sprint planning isn't conducted just because it's an item on a checklist. We do it because it identifies what needs to be accomplished in this sprint. This helps us to sharpen our focus on exactly those tasks and no others. We'll get to the other tasks in the product backlog in later sprints. As part of this, we also want to make sure that the number of tasks we're working on at any point in time doesn't exceed the capacity of the team. This means we won't add tasks to the sprint unless we have a reasonable chance of completing them. We'll also work on the highest priority tasks in the backlog first to ensure that dependencies are honored. Think about it. Not doing this could create a situation where you have a feature that can't be tested and integrated because it's dependent on another feature that hasn't yet been developed. Finally, it's ideal to have team members working on tasks that they have the skills needed to complete and ones they find interesting. Before we begin discussing the process of defining your sprint plan, let's first define some concepts and terms. Stakeholders are anyone who has an interest in the success of the project. This includes the development team, end users, and any cooperating departments or business units. Velocity is the rate at which the team works. If we assign relative levels of difficulty to tasks and measure what we could complete in each sprint, it's then possible to determine the average amount of work a team can complete in any sprint. Constraints are things that, that slow down a team's velocity. In other words, anything that limits their ability to complete as much work as they have in prior sprints. Constraints include things such as t task complexity, vacations, sick leave, and unfortunately, someone leaving the team. Story points are a technique used to estimate the relative difficulty of a given task. One of the most popular ways of estimating story points is for team members to discuss each task and agree on a Fibonacci number that represents the complexity of that, that task. Work in progress, also known as WIP, is the amount of work currently in progress as measured by the sum of the story points for each active task in the plan. And finally, early and continuous delivery. The tasks you complete in a sprint must be deployed to production at the end of that sprint. The, this allows you to test and integrate new additions and features completed in previous sprints. This is the iterative nature of the Agile methodology, and it's what makes it different and more productive than waterfall methodologies. We'll be following these five steps at the start of each sprint to create the sprint plan. The sprint planning meeting needs to take place as early in the sprint as possible, and you should limit it to no more than one hour. You might find it takes a little bit longer in early sprints, but the team will get better and more efficient as the voyage progresses. The goal of these steps is to identify the highest priority tasks waiting to be completed, but to only select those that can be completed before the sprint ends. Next, we'll go through each of these steps in detail to show you how to apply them to your voyage project. The first thing we need to do is determine which tasks are eligible to be considered for this sprint. The tasks outlined in red are the highest priority tasks in our project backlog. To save space, we're only showing these tasks in this example. Remember that your product backlog will have many other tasks, and it's your job to choose only those with the highest priority. It's also important to keep in mind that any unfinished tasks from the prior sprint are considered to be the highest priority tasks. Now, let's estimate how much work we can complete in this sprint. In this example, we've selected four tasks as candidates for this sprint. 
Our next step is to determine how many we can complete in the sprint. For this, we're going to assign story points to each task to provide a relative estimate of their difficulty. This is an exercise the entire team should participate in and shouldn't take a lot of time since we're estimating relative difficulty, not exact difficulty or the exact amount of time each task will take. In this example, we're also using Fibonacci numbers, that is, numbers in the sequence 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Fibonacci numbers start at 0, and an individual number is the sum of its two immediate successors. Based on prior sprints, we've determined that our three team members have, a complete, have completed an average of 8, 8, and 13 story points each. Looking at the four tasks under consideration for this sprint, we can see they have a total of 13 story points. So, we know the team has the capacity to complete all four in this sprint. Let's move on now to the next step. Let's now review each task and assign them to members of the team. We're using the term assign very generically here. In practice, the team will consider each task and team members will volunteer for tasks based on the skills needed to complete them and their personal preferences. Although, preference is usually applied to very broad categories of experience, such as front-end, back-end, database, or even specific libraries and packages like GraphQL. Note that we've assigned the three highest priority tasks to each of the three team members, but not the lowest priority task. This is because it makes no sense to do so, since they can only work on one task at a time. This limits the amount of work in progress, so team members can concentrate on completing one task at a time and doing it well. At this point, the sprint plan is complete, and you're ready to start coding. But let's not forget about the fourth, fourth task that hasn't yet been assigned. We'll look at that next. Remember the implement profile screen task we didn't assign during sprint planning? What are we going to do with it? This task will carry over to the next sprint if we don't complete one of the first three tasks during the current sprint. However, if one of the three tasks we started with is completed, we can assign Implement Profile Screen to the first available team member to begin working on it. Since this task requires eight story points, and since all three members of the team have completed an average of at least eight story points in prior sprints, whoever finishes their task first can start this one. Six weeks may sound like a long time when you start a voyage, but it's not. This is why it's important to begin working on tasks as soon as the team's capacity is available. It's also important to move tasks from not started to in progress when you begin working on them and from in progress to completed when they are finished. This ensures that everyone on the team can see the most up-to-date status for each task and the project as a whole. Finally. Remember that you'll get better with each sprint, but this can only happen if as a team you review what you've done in each sprint and reflect on what worked well and what needs to be improved. Review and reflection are the cornerstones of any continuous improvement process, and one of the goals of Agile isn't to stand still, but to help team members reach their potential and make each sprint more productive than the last one. That's it for this video. We hope you found it helpful and that it will help you make your team more productive. Remember to ask questions in the Discord Ask Cohort and Code Questions channel, and don't forget it's okay to make mistakes as long as you fail forward.